quick history lesson. So it's 1938 in Europe, and there's this Hitler guy who's looking to expand his empire a bit. In March, he manages to snatch up Austria with the Anschluss, but he's still kinda hungry. Over the border, he sees Czechoslovakia. Specifically, he sees the Sudetland region of Czechoslovakia, which has a bunch of ethnic Germans that are being oppressed. It's also the only area defensible from a German invasion, holds a bunch of industry, and is home to many German dissidents that criticize Nazi rule, but that's completely irrelevant to Hitler's decision making. He claims that as leader of the Germans, it's his duty to look after the Germans. He loudly proclaims to the rest of the world that he wants the Sudetenland to be a part of Germany. Obviously, Czechoslovakia has an issue with this, but so do Britain and France. You can't just take shit. Plus, France has a mutual assurance treaty with the Czechs. That would make it really awkward if Hitler just waltzed into the Sudetenland. But I really want it, Hitler says. I want it so bad I might be even willing to go to war. Now, mind you, it's 20 years after the Great War. Europe has had scuffles before, but nothing that involved machine guns or mustard gas. 18 million dead, seven of them civilians. Closest thing in recent history that Europe has to compare the mass decimation of human life during World War I to is the 30 year war with 8 million dead. And that war took 30 years instead of 4. And it happened nearly 300 years ago and not 20 years ago. The memories of the trenches are still fresh. No one wants to start another conflict. So Britain and France say, all right, let's talk about it. Chamberlain, repping Britain, meets with Hitler September 22nd. The general mood here is that the Sudetenland isn't worth fighting a war over. Chamberlain is basically there to tell Hitler that he can have it. Hitler says, not good enough. The situation has changed. He wants all of Czechoslovakia dissolved. Take the deal or go to war. Later in the evening, Hitler calls up Chamberlain at his hotel. He tells him he's willing to accept his original offer of the Sudetenland, but all Czechoslovakian military personnel have to abandon their fortifications by September 28th at 8 a.m. He's just a no-nonsense guy. He just wants to quickly resolve the situation. This has nothing to do with Sudetenland being the most defensible area against the German invasion. Chamberlain talks him down to October 1st for the deadline. Hitler says, okay, but only because I really respect you. September 30th, Hitler and Chamberlain meet again in Munich, this time joined by Daladier, repping France. They meet to discuss the Sudetenland question. Where are the Czechs who are directly affected by this Sudetenland question? In a hotel room, somewhere nearby, hopefully. They weren't invited. Luckily, there's a fourth head of state attending the conference to keep things civil. The most neutral man that has ever neutraled in all of history, Benito Mussolini of fascist Italy. So, the deal is signed. Hitler pinky promises that he won't claim any more territory in Europe, and Chamberlain comes back home and delivers a peppy speech about peace for another generation. Hitler can have Sudetenland, and the Western powers can have peace. Right? 14th of March, 1938, Slovakia breaks off into a fascist puppet state under pressure from Nazi Germany. 16th of March, 1938, German troops occupy what's left of Czechoslovakia and establish protectorate Bohemia and Moravia, effectively making it a part of Germany. September 1st, 1939, Germany invades Poland, and you know the rest. 50 to 70 million dead, depending on how you run the numbers. Turns out this Hitler guy wasn't a man of his word. If you've had a decent high school history teacher, you might remember the term appeasement. If you weren't blessed, appeasement is the diplomatic policy of making concessions to an aggressive power in order to avoid a war. It would be ironic if it weren't obvious. Appeasement is seen as one of the chief causes of World War II. Appeasement gave Hitler a chance to test the patience of the Allied powers all while building up his military for a full-out war. Turns out letting an autocratic ruler do whatever, as long as it doesn't directly involve you, is a pretty bad policy. We've been here before. They teach us this stuff in high school because the chances of us not ending up in the same place somewhere down the line is pretty slim. We've been here before. We've been here before, and I sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, hope that the West has a better plan this time than sending strongly worded letters. Let me leave you with this. Chamberlain's speech when he landed back in London after a Munich conference. It sounds absurd in hindsight, and it's a snug fit for the Curb Your Enthusiasm theme. But according to most accounts, Chamberlain fully believed that Hitler would keep his word. He fully believed that he had managed to prevent mass bloodshed for another generation. From the sounds of it, so did the crowd.
Next, I want to say that the settlement of the Czechoslovakian problem, which has now been achieved, is, in my view, only the prelude to a larger settlement in which all Europe may find peace. This morning, I had another talk with the German Chancellor, Herr Hitler. And here is the paper which bears his name upon it as well as mine. Some of you perhaps have already heard what it contains, but I would just like to read it to you. We, the German Führer and Chancellor, and the British Prime Minister have had a further meeting today and are agreed in recognizing that the question of Anglo-German relations is of the first importance for the two countries and for Europe. We regard the agreement signed last night and the Anglo-German naval agreement as symbolic of the desire of our two peoples never to go to war with one another again. again.